Barbara, good evening. Good evening, Joanne. Good evening, Dawn. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Welcome, everybody. Elder Nicole. Elder Nicole, I need to give you a call um, to work on some things with you. Trisha, good evening. Joanne, good evening. Joanne, I haven't forgotten about you. Thank you so much. I, I've just been so busy. Nicole, I've been busy. <laughs> been crazy. God bless you, Lamont. It's good to see you, my brother. Dell, it's good to see you. God bless you. God bless you all. Amen. Truly, God is worthy of all praise. God bless you, Angela. Thank you, you all, for sharing, sharing the video. God bless you, Barbara. Uh, Miss Dorothy, God bless you. God bless you. So good to see you all. Amen. And I'm so grateful for you guys taking out time on this Memorial Day weekend, this holiday of yours, to sh uh, spend a few moments with me in study of God's Word. I want to thank you for that. You know, God bless you, Kim. It's good to see you. Um, Thezen, God bless you. I believe that's the way you pronounce it. Please forgive me if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, Denise, Minister Denise, God bless you. Melinda, Melinda, thank you for calling me. I appreciate you. God bless you. Amen. Good evening, Denise. God bless you. Amen. Camille, it's good to see you. God bless you. Amen. Oh, thank you, Thezen. That's good, Thezen. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting name. Very interesting. Amen. And so God bless you all. Amen. So we're going to begin in prayer, asking God for wisdom and, you know, and just thanking God for the many things he has done in our lives. And listen, and I just want to just take a few moments before we pray and just highlight a few individuals. Um, our brother Lamont uh, Banks, um, he actually... Uh, post a lot of videos on teaching of God's word um, with other people and he shares videos of a lot of different people and so Lamont I just want to say thank you for how you have shared our videos um, and and the videos that you have posted have been a blessing and so truly the word of God says that it's all of us we all are working together for the call of Christ for the kingdom of God and it's, it's not, not a one-man show, but it's all of us working together. And the Bible says, when the body works together and each member does its part, it edifies itself in love and the body grows. And so, you know, as I get older, you know, I'm realizing more and more the importance of partnership, having um, people that are around you that are spiritually minded, those who are mature and those who are really focusing on the same things to grow in the knowledge of Christ, not looking for a name for themselves, not looking for, you know, accolades or prosperity, but no, just to, because of the love of the kingdom, you know, just to love on God's people and to bless them with the word of God. And so many people um, are a part of churches um, or ministries that are not really being fed. They're not really being taught properly. And so because of that, they go to church and they're hungry. They go to church and they're constantly hungering and thirsting for more. Um, and and so it's it's ministries like this one and others other ministries that are feeding the people of God. And, and I believe that God is pleased. I believe that God is pleased. And so for each of you, that in your own spheres of influences, that you are out there sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're out there telling people about the love of Jesus Christ. Listen, the word of God says, be not weary in well-doing for you shall reap if you faint not. And we know that what we do for Christ will last. And so God bless each and every one of you that are servants of the living God. And so let's go down in prayer so we can get into our study tonight. Amen. And so let us pray right now. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to study your word. And Father, we come before you, Lord God, asking you to clean our hearts and our minds. And Father, give our spirits what we stand in need of in order to faithfully perform what you would want us to do tonight, God. And we pray for free flow of your Holy Spirit in your word. 
and that God, you would give us understanding, give us knowledge, give us wisdom, Father, and bless us with direction tonight. Father, we glorify your name, Lord God, and we thank you for all that you're doing, Father, and we, we bless your holy name, and we know that you are soon to come, and so, Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Your word is just, it is pure, it is righteous, it is holy, Lord God, and we pray that you would feed us with your word tonight. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are in the midst of us, for even Christ says, where two or three are gathered in my name, behold, I am in the midst. And so, Father, we thank you right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So God bless each and every one of you tonight um, that have decided to join me tonight. And I thank you once again for those that I didn't speak to directly. Hey, Brother Jared, it's good to see you, my man. I haven't seen you in a, in a minute. Um, it's, it's so good to see you tonight. And so God bless you. Amen. And so, you know, for those of you um, who, hello, Jim, how you doing? Um, and thank you, Lamont. I appreciate that. And, and so God bless each and every one of you tonight. Um, and I thank God for you guys. You know, um, I just want to take just a moment. Um, those of you who know me, you know, I'm, I'm very, you know, on point, right? But every once in a while, I get into this mode of reminiscing and thinking, right? And, um, and I just want to say to each and every one of you, thank you. I, I just want to say thank you. You guys don't realize how much of a blessing you are to me. Um, the fact that I meet with you on these times that we've been meeting and, and me having to study and to prepare myself to, to deliver to you the word of God has been such a blessing to me. And then many of your comments and, and many of you have texted me or called me or sent a message to me over, over Facebook. And, you know, um, and, and I don't want to start calling each of you by name, but there's a few of you that I really want to um, uh, just note and, and mention. You know, like I, I think about um, uh, Trisha. Trisha, you are such a blessing. You know, your, your faithfulness is, is something to be an example to others. You know, you um, always have a good word in season. And, and that is a beautiful thing, you know. Um, and, and the reason why I'm taking this time out tonight to share these things before we get into the word is because oftentimes we find ourselves only... Uh, listening to one person or listening to, in this instance, me. Um, but but what you guys see is not as a direct result of only my doings and my my work and my, you know, influence, but it's also the influence that you guys have had on me. You guys have blessed me. You guys have blessed me. And so, Trisha, thank you for your spirit, you know, thank you for your spirit. Your spirit is a wonderful spirit. And, and, and when I think about Joanne, Joanne, you are such a blessing. You are such a blessing. You have helped me in so many different ways. Um, and you have blessed me in more ways than I can count already. And, and I knew you from when I was a kid, you know, um, and, and you've been such a blessing. And so thank you, you know, Lamont, thank you for what you do. The, the things you do is such a blessing to me. You know, Angela, what you do is such a blessing. You know, um, Siobhan, what you do is such a blessing. It, it is so comforting for me to have people that I can entrust things to and say, you know, can you handle this for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? You know, I thank you. You know, Elder Nicole, I thank you for your servant's heart. You know, how you just are willing to just jump right in and roll up the sleeves and do what you need to do to get things done. Thank you. Thank you, Camille, for your words of encouragement. You know, thank you for each of you. Uh, Eram, thank you, you know, for all that you do. And there's so many more of you that, you know, on a week to week basis, I can almost when you when I get a message from you, it is such a blessing. It is such a blessing. And sometimes you don't know what I may be going through at that moment. You don't know where, listen, I'm human. I, I, look, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not no super saint. I'm not no super duper hero saint, 
right? But I am a man that God has chosen in his weakest point. God chose me to lead his people. And, and that is magnanimous for me. That is something that is huge because, you know, I'm so unworthy. And, and to, to, to see that God chose me to do what, what I do and to see how God uses me to, to bless people and to educate people and to strengthen people. You know, listen, I could not do it without you. I could not. You guys are such a blessing to me. And so I just want to say thank you for each of you in whether it be a small part or a big part or a large part or a small part or a medium part, whatever it is, you know, thank you for you blessing me. And, you know, it's emotional at times. And, and I tell you, I love the Lord, but I love God's people. And you guys are such a blessing, you know? Even people from my church and uh, my church family are such a blessing to me. And I'm so unworthy. I am so unworthy, so unworthy. And so before I start crying, let me just say that to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are such a blessing to me. And, and I pray that as we share the word of God, that you would forever desire more of Jesus, more of him, you know, and, and just grow in his knowledge and his understanding, just grow in the knowledge of God, you know, and, and then apply this thing to your life because there are three stages that we go through. And the three stages that believers go through is what I call sit, walk, and stand. Sit, walk, and stand. I read many years ago, there was this book by a writer named Watchman Nee, and he wrote this book called Sit, Walk, Stand. And there are three stages that I believe also that every believer goes through. When, when I see people come to my church, and as a pastor, my desire is to see, God, what is it that they need? Um, and one of the first things that I require of them is to sit. Um, what does the word sit means? It means to be planted, to be planted. Listen, there's a lot of people that the reason why you haven't received the blessing that God has for you, the reason why you haven't, your ship hasn't come in or, or you didn't get what you expected that you should get is because you refuse to sit. Now, to sit not only means to stay in one place, but to sit, to sit means to um, have your mind, your heart, and your emotions settled that this is where I need to stay. There's a lot of people when they come into a church or they come into a ministry, they come into their seeing, let me see if I can go there to get a position or I can go there to get something my way. And if things don't go my way, then I'm ready to run. Listen, if you're not planted, if you're not planted in where you're being fed, like for those of you who have been with me over these last, you know, wow, it's been a couple of years. But live Bible studies, I was doing for, you know, December, I believe it will be a year, I believe, December or January. Um, and so it's like, you know, when we, uh, for those of you who have followed me regularly and you have kept behind me, I know without a shadow of a doubt that there are areas of your life that has transformed and changed. I know that, um, oh, God bless you. A Amen, Carmen. God bless you. And God bless you, Jacqueline. Amen. And so I know that there are areas of your life that have changed. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is in the midst of us. And when he's in the midst of us, his word searches our hearts. His word searches our spirits. And it finds 
those wounds, it finds those weaknesses, it finds those issues, and maybe even sometime for some of y'all, when I have taught certain lessons, some of y'all got a little pissed off. And why did you get pissed off? You got pissed off because you were comfortable in that area. This is something that you have done, and you've done it this way all the time, and you know what? Since you've done this way all the time, change doesn't always feel, feel good. Good. Change doesn't always feel good. Sometimes, you know, change is disruptive. Sometimes change uh, hurts. Sometimes change causes you to feel uncomfortable or feel like, you know, a little bit scared or nervous about, you know, this is something different, you know, and, um, and but, but it is imperative for you to sit. It is imperative for you to get settled. It's it's almost like today I was transplanting from uh, a little small seedling. I was uh, transplanting from this little cup, the seedling cup, into a pot, right? And and what I found is that when I took the plant that w had grown inside this little seedling pot, when I took the plant out, I noticed that the plant had grown, but the roots had wrapped around inside, right? Now listen, if these roots are not broken apart and given room to grow, the plant will kill itself. The plant will de be destroyed because it will then rob from itself what it needs to grow. And so many people, when they when they choose not to be planted anywhere, what the, what happens is that they are only planted in themselves, and because of that, their root system, although they grow in some things, their root system begins to be wrapped around and surmounted around themselves until eventually you kill yourself with your own foolishness. It is important to know that we as people of God must be planted. We must be planted. Now you say, well, pastor, how long should we be planted? How long? It's not a matter of who, how long. It is a matter that in, in, when, when it comes to planting, you keep a plant in a certain area until that plant outgrows and transforms. In other words, when you take a seedling and you germinate that seed, when that seed breaks itself, it dies and it breaks, and then a plant starts to grow out, you can't right away take that plant and put it on the outside. Why? Because the elements outside are too rough for it. Those elements outside are, are too abrasive. And those elements outside will kill that little plant because it hasn't gained strength enough in order to handle itself. There's a lot of you that when you bounce from place to place to place, the reason why you know, the way you'll know that you're not ready to be moved is that little things offend you. Little stuff offends you. What people say offends you. What people do offend you. That means you're not ready to be moved. That means you're not ready to be moved. Why? Because the Bible says offenses will come because of the word. So when you have the word of God in your heart, like me as a pastor, I'm going to teach the word. Now, listen, I know a lot of scripture. I know a lot of word. I've studied a long time. You know, I've been studying a lot, but I don't know everything. So guess what? Um, if I would have done the online Bible study, maybe five, ten maybe even 12 years ago, then maybe I would not be faithful like I am now. Why? Because from the moment I started teaching this live Bible study and the moment I became a pastor of my church and teaching at my church, there's a whole new level of devils that come to attack. There's a whole new level of chaos, troubles, and trials, and difficulties that most people on the outside don't even have a clue to what I go through. 
most people don't have a clue. They just think, oh, well, pastor, you should always do this. And, and then, like, for example, some of you don't realize that times when you've texted me and said, hey, pastor, it's 830. Why are you not on the conference line? Because I'm still in prayer. I'm still in prayer. I'm still seeking God's face because I don't want to give you man's philosophy, man's psychology, man's ideology, or something that sounds good. No, I want to give you what thus says the Lord. And then oftentimes I even got to deal with my own heart. I got to deal with my own heart, my own issues, my own drama, and I got to set that thing right so that when I teach you, I'm giving you the pure, unadulterated word of God. And so, you know, this, this requires work. It requires effort. There's a lot of people that says, oh, you haven't called me back. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's been so crazy for me. You know, and oftentimes I got to find a place. And so when I first moved to this place, I didn't tell really nobody where I lived at. I wouldn't give people my address. I went, why? Because folks, you just, a lot of people just think about what they want. So they call, they talk, they email, they text, they stop by, they do all these different things, not realizing that they're only one piece of the multiple slices of pie. And so therefore, if, if like I was telling a friend the other day, I said that sometimes I'm on the phone ministering to people between eight and sometimes 10, 12 hours a day. So my first thought when I get off the phone is not to get back on the phone. No, my first thought is to get on my knees, pray, reset my mind, reset my thought. And, and listen, being a pastor of a church is, is heavy enough, but then add to it, there's this online global family and it's even more ministry. And, and I'm only one person. And what I want to do is never let pride, arrogance, or anything come into my ministry. I want to always be humble under the face of God. I always want to be humble under each and every one of you to let you know that I am not the end all be all. No, I'm a man just like many of you are. You're human. All of you are human. We all are growing. We all are coming to the knowledge of the truth. We all are growing and we want to be like Jesus. Rodney is not the author and finisher of your faith. No, Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. So each of us is trying our best, or like my pastor used to say, our level best, our level best to really be like Christ. And that's not easy. Listen, it's easy to talk about wealth and prosperity. Why? Because folks love that stuff. Folks love all the money and get rich and this is your best season and today is the day you're going to get everything you want and everything like that. It's easy to talk about that because that's all over the place. And so you can find a plethora of information on those areas. But how about suffering for Jesus Christ? Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about what you go through. And today's topic, today's topic is hold on for your blessing. What do I mean by hold on? In other words, you got to know what to do when you're in that holding pattern. Later for the blessing, because the blessing is sure. Whatever God has for you is for you. Whatever God wants for you is for you. Whatever God has is going to come your way is going to come your way. So listen, let's not talk about that right now. Let's talk about what do you need to do in the holding pattern? What do you need to do in the midst of everything that you have to deal with? In the midst of all the trials, in the midst of the naysayers, in the midst of, listen, maybe God gave you a vision of a business, but listen, you got to go through those maybe a year, two years, three years of, of unprofitability. What do you do in those three years? What do you do? How do you hang on in there? How do you hang on in there to say, you know, listen, I'm going to let the joy of the Lord still be my strength these 365 days or maybe 365 days times three times four times five. What about times 15? What about if you're like the woman with the issue of blood for 38 years? What about if you're like the man who was blind for 40 years? What if you're like the children of Israel that got to wander around in the desert for 40 years? Listen, let me tell you something. You need to know how to hold. Yeah. Yeah. Melinda, you need to know how to hold on to the hold on. You need to know how to have joy in the midst of that holding pattern. You know how it is when we get on the plane, we get on the 
a plane and we want to fly somewhere and we're so anxious to get to our destination. We want to get to that we want to get to that beach. We want to get to that whatever it is, right? And and we're on the plane, and it goes, well, we're we're taxiing on a runway. We got about 20 planes in front of us, and uh, I don't know when we're going to move. And and you're sitting there, and you're looking out the window, and you're getting frustrated. You're getting aggravated. Now you get now the seats are too small. The seats are too tight. And now you don't you this person stand, sitting next to you is rubbing too close to you, and and you're finding yourself getting aggravated. And you know what? There's a whole lot of believers in the church that they're aggravated. Why are they aggravated? Because somebody else got their blessing and they're still waiting on theirs. Somebody else got their husband or their wife and they're still waiting for theirs. Somebody else had a baby and they're still waiting for their child. Somebody else have their blessing and their ship came in and all the stuff like that and they sitting there watching everything. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy for you. I'm so very happy for you. So many people are sitting around just frustrated because they don't know what to do in the holding pattern, what to do, what's going on. So number one, we talked about that you need to sit, you need to be planted. Number two, you need to be able to walk. What does that mean? You need to be able to walk that walk. So in other words, like for example, whatever you feel like you've been called to, you need the freedom to be able to walk that thing as that thing. So like, for example, if you say you've been called to preach, then as a pastor, I want to know how much studying you're doing. If you ain't studying the word and you misquoting scripture and, and all like that, no, boo-boo, you ain't ready yet. You need to walk this thing first. You need to walk this thing for a little while. You think you are a counselor, but you don't know how to counsel yourself? No. You don't know how to counsel yourself out of trouble? How are you going to counsel somebody else out of trouble? So you need to walk that thing. You need to sit first, sit first, and while in the sitting pattern, you're learning. You learn things, you understand things, you ask a lot of questions. You you know, I used to get my pastor upset because my pastor, my first pastor, oh no, actually my second pastor, my second pastor, you know, he was very educated and had a lot of knowledge, you know, very progressive and all like that. And and he would have like these Bible classes in the church, right? And he would have to get, and I would always be like this. My hand would always be like this. Always like this. I'm asking question after question. Why? Because I was in the sitting pattern. I was in the sitting pattern. I was asking questions. I was I was not trying to be um all Mr. Know it all. I wasn't trying to be the one who did all the talking, but I was being the one who was constantly hungering and thirsting after righteousness. When I got saved, November twenty eighth, nineteen eighty. When I got saved, my pastor told me and two other friends of mine, because three of us got saved the same day. When we got saved, he says, I want you to go home. I want you to read uh, the Psalms. I want you to read the Proverbs for wisdom. And I want you to read uh, uh, St. John, the Gospel of John, right? And, and my friends, they read those, those books. But when I got home, I was looking at John talking about, well, the prophet Isaiah said this. So I said, I want to check it out. So I went to the prophet Isaiah. So I was reading, I was reading the, the minor prophets, the major prophets. I was reading uh, Ecclesiastes. I was reading Zephaniah. I was reading all these books and I was hungry. I was thirsting. Little did I know that God was calling me to be a teacher and, and a teacher who don't know nothing needs to shut up. A teacher who only talks about one thing needs to quit. Why? If you only want to talk about finances, if you only want to talk about blessings, listen, you better open your mind because if you are a teacher, there is so much more in the word that the people need to understand, right? Not just about wealth, but how to treat their husband, how to treat their wife. Um, I've heard pastors say, oh, well, I, I listen to love songs so me and my wife could get in the mood. Listen, if you need that to get in the mood, you definitely need Viagra. I'm telling you right now, because the fact is, if God doesn't teach you how to love your wife, if God doesn't teach you how to love your husband, then he ain't God, but he is God. So he'll teach you how to be respectful. He'll teach you how to honor. He'll teach you how to love. He'll teach you how to be committed and faithful. And you'll look at her and go, whoo, like Adam said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. My God, he looked at that woman. And she was butt naked and he was ready. Listen, don't. I need to pause for a second. 
but he was ready. That's all I can say. He was ready because when he sinned before God and God kicked them out of the garden, what was the next thing they did? They had sex. And some of y'all are too stiff. Some of y'all, y'all don't even understand what God can do in your life to, to bless you in this. My God, we're going to get into a subject that y'all not ready for right yet. But let's, let's get into the word of God, right? So number one, we need to sit. Number two, we need to walk, right? We need to walk. And then number three, the final stage, the final stage is to stand, to actually stand without any additional help. Like, for example, you don't need someone to tell you when you're wrong. Because now you can stand in that thing. You know when you're wrong and, and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Doesn't mean that you don't need instructors. Doesn't mean you don't need help. Doesn't mean people can advise you. But it does mean that you're able to stand on your two feet. And listen, I've been attack after attack after attack. And listen, I'm human. So sometimes the attack becomes a little bit overwhelming. But David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You know, and so every once in a while, I find that certain weights weigh very heavy on these shoulders of mine. And I go, oh, God, I don't say Calgon, take me away. I don't look for some tropical island to run to. I don't um, uh, uh, go, go somewhere and smoke or drink and take some wine to calm down. I don't do that stuff. You know what I do? I fall on my face and I say, God, I need your power. I need your understanding. God, I need your wisdom in this. God, I need your I need your help in this. And listen, I don't know about y'all, but I can tell you that the same God that picked you up from sin, snatched you out of the clutches of sin, the flesh, and the devil is the same God that can help you through what you're going through today. And that's why the word of God says there's so many people that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of of God. They deny that power to help me through. Listen, every once in a while, you're going to go through something. Every once in a while, you're going to go through some, some storms, some battles. And listen, it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. Listen, I preached a sermon several um, years back on a men's day that men do cry. And there's a lot of people that when they see Pastor Rodney cry, oh my God, they don't know what to do. They're like, oh my God, what's happening? He's crying. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. Y'all see my face? Listen, it's, <laughs> it is about, it is really about that we are human. And don't make no, don't allow any pastor or minister or pastor or bishop or whoever, apostle, to tell you that you should never cry. No, the word of God says God stores all your tears in a bottle. He, he knows how you feel. He knows your frame. And sometimes I'm on, I'm on driving on the highway. And as I'm driving on the highway, I'll see a cloud or, or the Holy Spirit will come in that car and start ministering to my heart. And all of a sudden, I'll turn off the music. And as I'm driving down the road, I'm worshiping and the tears are falling. And listen, tears are healing. They are so healing and, and, and it refreshes your soul and it, 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 it just lets all that junk come out of you, all that stuff. And there's so many people that got so much baggage inside. They got so much weight. The word of God says, wherefore, seeing that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every sin and the weight that so easily trips you up. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and now has sat down at the right hand of the Father. It said, consider him who endured such contradiction against himself, lest you faint and be weary in your minds. Listen, when you know what Jesus went through, and every time Jesus went through, he said, Father. Same thing you must do. Same thing I must do. It's be real. So we got sitting to sit, to walk, and then to stand. Now I want you to turn with me to uh, Genesis chapter 15. 
Genesis chapter 15. Amen. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 15. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 14. No, let's just read. Uh, let's read verse 1 and then we'll read verse uh, 12 to 14. Okay? So Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 and 12 and to 14. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Verse 12 to 14. It says, Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said, God said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years, and also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Now, Here's the interesting thing. If you look here, God starts off this conversation to Abram saying that, Abram, I am your exceedingly great reward. Okay, wow. God, you're going to bless me. God, you got me. God, oh, wow, you're going to give me something that's marvelous. Oh, God, I love it, right? That sounds good. But then if you keep reading, God says your descendants are going to be in bondage. And they're going to be afflicted 400 years. And then he says, then afterwards, afterwards, he says, then I'm going to bring them out and bring them out with great possessions. And every once in a while, my friends, you may not hear this from anybody else, but every once in a while, God's blessing is in the wait. God's blessing is in the wait. Listen, a lot of people think that God's blessing is in the blessing. And that when I get that blessing, then I know that God bless me. No, but God's blessing is sometimes in the wait, right? It's in the wait. It's when you got to wait through some things that God will give you the greatest blessing. It is not in the receiving, but it's in the wait. When you have to wait for some things, I want you to look at Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. And look at what it says. It says, by your patience, possess your souls. By your patience, possess your souls. I'll read that again. By your patience, possess your souls. Now, I want you to look with me again in Romans 8. And 25. So that was Luke 21 and 19. And I want you to look at Romans 8 and 25. Romans 8 and 25 says, But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Now, if you ever notice, I'll use a, a child for example, right? I'll use a child for example, right? If you ever notice, a child will, um, a child, if you take a child to the store and you take that child to the store and you say, mommy is going to buy you something, right? Mommy's going to buy you a toy. Let's say if it's a PlayStation or whatever, a Game Boy, whatever the, the kids are playing with, right? So, Let's say you say, mommy's going to buy you something, or daddy's going to buy you something, right? That kid goes, oh, they are excited. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Guess what? 
In that moment, nothing is bothering them. In that moment, they're not frustrated. They're not hungry. They're not worried. They're not cold. They're not hot. They're not anything. They're just excited, right? But then when you take them to the store and they buy it and they open it up, chances are not too long thereafter, they'll play with it and then you'll see it collecting dust somewhere. Because what happens is that when you eagerly wait for something, when you trust that God promises and he says, my word shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish everything that I've said. When you trust God to be honest and God is, you know, God will never fail. God will never lie. When you trust him and you listen to what God said, that God thought enough of you to make a promise to you, then you get excited. That excitement is power to deal with the junk that's coming your way. That excitement is power. That's why you have to be ever so careful that when the Lord promises you something, who you talk to about it. Because if you talk to the wrong person that has your ear, when you talk to them, they will they can say things that will sabotage what God says and you'll start doubting it. You'll start disbelieving it. And when you stop dis when you start disbelieving it, the word of God says, let a double-minded man not think that he will receive anything from God. So it's important to protect that thing, to say, yes, God is going to give it to me. God promised me. God said he's going to do it. Listen, I remember years ago, years ago, the Lord asked me, and, and I was in between, I was on in uh I was actually in college. Well, I wasn't in college, but I was taking some additional classes um, to just refresh myself, right? And so when I was taking some classes and I was going from one uh, uh, building on the campus to another, um, the Lord said, what makes you happy? You know, I, I was walking, I was just ministering to the Lord and the Lord said, what makes you happy? And I said, freedom. And the Lord said, if you trust me, you'll never want for anything. And so what, what, when God called me into full-time ministry, this is the thing that I kept reminding myself. Because listen, I was so used to working a certain amount of hours and getting a certain amount of paycheck. But when God told me to go into full-time ministry, then I found myself saying, well, Lord, I don't know where I'm going to make ends meet. I don't know how I'm going to make things go. But then what I stopped doing is stop thinking about that and remember what God said. If you trust me, You'll never, <clears throat> excuse me, want for anything. And so because of that, every time I would go into, even to this day, when I go into different financial problems and things get tight, because listen, sometimes it get tight. I'm not going to lie to you. And we're human and it goes through it. Sometimes Rodney has spent money in the wrong way. And so something that God had earmarked that money for, I spent it on something else. And now when that thing comes up, I don't have the means to do it. So it is then that I start to remind myself to the Lord. I said, say, God, you promised you was going to take care of me. God, you promised if I trust you, you could, you said, I'll never want for anything. God, you promised that the, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And I start promise going over his promises over and over again until Hear it? Listen what I'm talking about. Until that excitement builds up inside and overwhelms and overshadows and surmounts all of the worries and the stresses. See, remember I told you, keep in mind that we talked about in the beginning, sit, walk, stand. See, you can't stand in something if you first don't sit. And you're not going to sit if you first don't prove it and walk it out. So what happens is that every time you go through a struggle, every time, listen, I'm, I'm teaching you tonight. Every time you go through a, a situation, you got to go right back to that sit, walk, stand, sit, walk, stand. First of all, sit on that thing. Okay. What am I going through right now? What am, what's, I'm, what am I facing? What are you facing right now? Sit down and let God speak to you. Let God speak to you. Don't start talking to friends. Don't get on Facebook. Oh, God, I'm about to die. Stop that. You hear me? Stop that. 
tell your hands to stop typing your frustration on Facebook because all you're going to get is people chiming in saying, oh girl, yeah, me too. I'm going through hell too. Oh yeah, girl, what's going on? Do I got to fight somebody? Come on, people of God, sit. Let God speak to you. Let God speak to you. So if you're going through a financial crisis, then study and meditate on what God has to say about finances and how he will take care of his people, how he will supply your every need according to your riches and glory, how the Lord, he says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. You know, every time you sit, you sit there until things start to shift inside, okay? Then when it starts to shift, now you walk in that thing. How do you walk in that thing? That means if you're sitting at home and you're crying, <laughs> oh God, please, Lord, you're crying, get up off that bed, fold that cover, go and wash your behind, brush your teeth, comb your hair, and go outside and do something. Walk in that faith. Walk in that faith to say, my God, Lord, you promised to take care of me, so I ain't going to worry about it. I ain't going to stress out about it. I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to get on Facebook and dump. No, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and do something productive. I'm going to go and do something that's, that's beneficial. So sometimes maybe you need to get up, clean your house. Stop worrying about when you're going to pay the bills. Get up, wash some dishes. You know, cook some food. Get up and go outside. And if you don't got no money, grab a bucket and some soap and go out and wash your car. Wash your car. Take your time and wash your car. And as you're washing, sing the glory of the Lord. Sing the praises of the Lord. And let that excitement build up. And then when it builds up and it overwhelms your fears and your worries, now you can stand. Let's say, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, when is my boyfriend or my girlfriend going to ask me to marry them? Or when is my, my Boaz or my Eve going to come in? Listen, if you pining away, listen, go up there, shave your back, shave your legs, clean your face, comb your hair, you know, go outside to the library and read a book. Go for a walk. Do some power walking where you got to sweat a little bit. Go out there and enjoy your life. Why? Because the more you sit in misery, the more you sit in fear, the more you sit in doubt, the more you sit in that stuff, that stuff will overwhelm you. But if you sit, I'm telling you, this simple instruction for every believer, if you would just remember, sit, walk, stand. In everything, whatever I'm going through, right? Yes, Joanne, you know, if whatever I'm going through, you know, um, if, if, you're, if you're going through whatever, if somebody is pissing you off at work, then sit down. And, and if you can't navigate the word because you're not skillful in the word, then go to someone who is skillful in the word and say, can I ask you a question? What does the Bible say about when a coworker piss you off? And then when they give you scriptures to read, go home and sit in that thing. Don't do a whole lot of talking. Don't go over there and rehearse everything they said. Because they said this to me and they said that to me. And I ain't like that. Because listen, if you come to this wise preacher, I don't want to hear the long story. I want to give you the solution so that you can turn that situation around and keep it moving. Because I ain't got time to waste on you, boo-boo, and you ain't got time to waste on me. It is time for us as people of God to mature and to move forward. So what do we do? We ask Lord, Lord, what, does you, what do you have to say in this manner? What do you have to say about this situation? What do you have to say about what I just figured out, but God, you said, you know my uprising and my downsetting. You know all my, my thoughts are far off, which means that that even before, even before that problem came to you, God knew it and God already had a way 
out of it. He knew what you needed. And guess what? Your blessings are short. For he says, here's the end result in everything. Think about this and, and, and write this down if you can. Post this on this feed. Post this on your page. Whatever you want to do, but post this. Think about this. Here's something that God has already settled in the heavens. And you never have to pray about this. You never have to um, ask God, Lord, are you going to do this? Because the Lord said, you are more than a conqueror. He says, you are more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror. So you never have to pray, God, am I going to make it out of this? God, am I going to win? God, am I going to be blessed? You never have to pray that. Why? Because you are already blessed. You're already blessed. You're already a conqueror. You're more than victorious. The word of God says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So already you know that. So what should you pray? You should be praying according to the will of God. So in other words, if that problem, if that problem has me, let's say that problem catches me off guard. It didn't catch God. But if that problem catches me off guard, that's why I love. Thank you, Eram. Thank you, Eram, for my shirt. Right? That's why I love this shirt. Unshakable faith. Why? Because of the fact is that when that problem comes up against you, yes, there are some times that you may find yourself saying, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this was going to happen. I didn't expect my car was going to break down. I didn't expect I was going to get into an accident. I didn't expect the boiler was going to break down. The refrigerator was going to break or this was going to break or maybe my lights. Oh my God, I thought I paid my bill, but I didn't pay my bill. All these things, you know, have happened and and you find yourself saying, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Guess what? God knows. He knows. What you stressed out for? What you worried about for? He knows. And guess what? No matter what, he says in Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purposes. So guess what? You know that in every circumstances, even if it shocked you, say what? Even if it shocked you, guess what? You know victory is mine. You know I'm more than a conqueror in this. You know that in the end of all this stuff, guess what? I'm going to make it through. You know that after all this stuff is done, you know that I am, I'm going to win. You know that. You know you're going to win. So what do you need to do? What do you need to do is that you have to prevent, you have to prevent um, the, the, the stuff that's coming at you from getting in you, okay? Like when, when people tell me that so-and-so made me mad. No, they didn't make you mad. You were already angry. They just, when they, when they came at you, they triggered something that was already in you. And if you are wise, you will acknowledge that before God and say, God, there is anger inside of me. Forgive me and take it out then guess what? That person pissing you off was a blessing in your life. They were a blessing in your life because they showed something that was in you that you didn't think was in you. I see a lot of people, a lot of immature Christians that walk around and say, oh, I ain't got no problem. I ain't got no problem with this. I ain't got no problem with that. I ain't got no problem with this one. No, I love everybody. I love everybody. And then something happens to piss them off and they lose control. Why? Because that situation God allowed to happen to show what was inside of you. And so our job is not to fight to win because we already won. Our victory is secure because of who Jesus is. And we walk in his victory. He says, all power in heaven and earth are in my hands. And he dwells in you and I. So the word of God says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So no matter what the world has to offer, you're still great. So what you have to do and what you have to do, your faith, your faith is being tested in every situation. Your faith is being tested on a daily basis. It's being tested to see if you really say 
who you are and you really are what you say. It is testing you. It is trying you. It is wrestling with you. And it's trying. And your only job is to keep that madness on the outside. That 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 junk, that craziness, that hostility, that jealousy, that envy, keep it on the outside. Because if it tempts you, temp being tempted is not a sin. Falling to temptation is a sin. And so when, when those problems come, what a lot of believers don't do, they don't fall back to that regular three steps, sit, walk, stand. How am I going to stand in this if I don't if I don't walk in it? How am I going to walk in it if I don't sit in it? So I got to sit until that thing becomes a part of me. That's why it, it if you're not planted, if you're not planted, you're so quick. That's why the word of God, Jesus gave a parable of a sower that went to sow. And he said some seeds fell upon stony places where there wasn't much earth. And the plant grew because there's nothing wrong with the seed. So the plant grew, but because it didn't have much earth, it was offended because of the elements. And, and then with it, it died. And, and that's what happens when you don't plant yourself and you don't sit in that thing. Don't just grab a word and run. That's why even at my church, you know, I tell people at my church, I'm like, look, when we come to Bible studies, I record all of my Bible studies. Um, I record it. When I finish these Bible studies, I post it online. Why? So that not so that I can make a name for myself, not so that Rodney may look and be important and I can have a lot of videos. No, because this is work. Because when I get off the conference line with you, y'all know sometimes we've been on the conference line for two hours, three hours, et cetera, right? And, and when we're on there in three hours and y'all say, oh, pastor, good night. Pastor is still up manipulating the video, downloading the video so I can upload it to YouTube so other people can watch it. So I'm usually up a couple of hours after the video making sure that everything is proper and people are being fed. And I'm answering questions for people who didn't want to post it on, on the public view, but they wanted to send it to me privately. So all these things requires work. So why do I do this? I do these things so that if there's any point that you missed, you can look at it again. Secondly, you can look at it if it touched you once, right? Look at it again and look at it again. Grab your Bible and write your copious notes and take detailed notes and do some further study. Say, well, oh, let me see why God said that. Let me see why God said this. So that you can allow for that thing, that word, that blessing, that, that blessing that God gave to you through Pastor Rodney, you can allow that blessing to take root in your life because what happens so many times to you, and, and I'll give it to you, Angie, um, the conference call info, and um, if, if any of 41 Vision people are on, can you uh, post um, the conference number and access number for Angie and when we're on for prayer as well as for Bible study? Um, and so God bless you, sister. Um, and so here it is, is that we, um, you know, what, what happens is that when that word comes, you get excited. And what most people do, oh, that was a good word. And they run with it. But wait a minute. No, no, no. You need to sit first. You need to walk and then you need to stand. So what do you do is that you let that word come in your spirit. If it touches your spirit, then you know what? Watch it again and watch it again. And watch it again and do further study on it again until that thing takes root in you and becomes a part of you. It's like food. If every time you ate, you had diarrhea and, 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 and released it out into the toilet, guess what? That food is doing you no good. And that's what happens. Many of you, the Lord has given a word Right in due season, when you're going through something or right before you're about to go something and go through something. And some of you, when you've gone through it, you forgot what you said hallelujah to. You forgot what you said amen to. You forgot what you said praise the Lord to. Okay? You forgot um, because of the fact of that you didn't allow it to gain root in your system. You didn't allow it to gain root. God bless you, Minister Denise, and God bless you, Eloise Holloway. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Okay? So you didn't allow it to become a part of you. It's like the food. When you eat it, you don't gain weight until that food becomes a part of you. 
and then your body grows. It's the same thing in the spirit. It is the same exact thing in the spirit. You must allow that word to gain root in your spirit. Once that gains root in your spirit, now get out there and walk it out. That means when naysayers are coming to you, that means when haters are coming to you, say, oh, no, 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 that's not the truth because this is what the word of God says. This is what God said. This is what God said to David. This is what God promises me. This is what God says is it belongs to me. Once you can walk in that thing, you will let that thing take root in your spirit and now you can stand. But too many people want to jump to standing and running and, and, and wandering, but they have not allowed for that thing to take root in their spirit. And so you got to be careful. I want you to also look at this. What else does patience do, right? Um, let's look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And when you get to James chapter 1, um, let's look at verses um, 3 and 4. James chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. It says, Now, here's something you have to do. Let patience have its power perfect work or it's perfecting work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing see when you don't allow for when you don't stay in the holding pattern you will never gain patience and if you never, there's a lot of people, I heard a lot of believers say, oh I'm not praying for patience because patience give you trouble you crazy you need patience. You need patience. Patience will cause you to be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. My patience sitting under my pastor, sitting under the Holy Spirit, sitting under the, the voice of Jesus and allowing, and allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to my heart and allowing this word to take root in my system, which many times, even like, you know, at home, sometimes, you know, I mean, my mind may be, you know, tossed to and fro with a lot of different things that I, I got going on at one time, right? And and I got all these thoughts going in. And then when it's time for me to go to bed, I hear the Holy Ghost says, okay, now go to bed. When I go to bed, you know, my mind is still active, so what I'll do is that while I'm in my bed, I'll start to meditate and memorize and rehearse in my mind scriptures that I know, scriptures that are relative to my, my situation, scriptures that are relative to me. And that is because I've studied. Now, in most times when you hear me quote scriptures, I quote scriptures from the King James Version. And that's because, you know, when, when I grew up and where I was doing most of my study was out of the King James Version. So most of my memory is in the King James Version. And I've heard people say, well, Pastor, what version is a good version to read? I asked them, number one question is, are you born again? They go, yes. If they're born again, then I say, well, what version was your pastor or preacher or whoever it was that preached to you? What version were they reading from? And whatever version they were reading from, or what version you were reading at that point, then I would say stay in that version. Now, you can use other versions to learn things and to kind of glean better understanding um, out of the word. But for me, the root of what I, I have in my system comes from the King James Version. But generally, when I'm studying with the church and when I'm studying with you all, I study out of the New King James Version. Um, and every once in a while, I'll new, use the New Living Translation. Um, but the Word of God is strong and powerful. The Word of God is mighty. The Word of God is piercing, and it is transformative. The Word of God can change how you're thinking. The Word of God can change how you're feeling. Um, ladies and gentlemen, when your emotions are getting out of control, 
You need to sit in the word until that word transforms you. What did God say? God says, he says that you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. That means you got to have this desire in you to turn away from that thing. Now, let's think about this. Let, let's get a little personal, right? Let's get a little personal. Let's say if you're feeling a little bit frisky, you're feeling a little bit frisky and and you want, you know, you want to have um, in some secluded rendezvous, you know, you want to have some little romantic rendezvous, right? If you're having that right now, these are all human things. A lot of times in the in the church, we take things and we um, we magnify them to so many levels until uh, the people of God is afraid. And I'm talking about single and married people. There are times that a married person may feel like I'm attracted to somebody else, right? For whatever reason. Um, it may be momentarily. It may be just in that one day that you find yourself looking at that person a little bit too much. Um, whatever it is, right? And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> singing it too. That's right. That's right. Um, you, you, you may be, you know, um, I don't know. You might be looking at the person stirring too much, find yourself constantly checking, 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 checking. And, and that is because a lot of people, women and men, but oftentimes when I've counseled even women, a lot of women, y'all lie to yourself. Y'all lie to yourself. Because if you're looking, right? If you look one time and you looked away, and then you look again, right? Let me give you a simple thing. If you look at somebody and then you look away and then you look at them again, it is because something in you is drawn to them, right? Something in you desires something from them. Now, for sometimes it could be something as innocent as you admire their outfit. You like the way their outfit is put together. But then there are other times when you're looking at them, you may, like ladies, you might see somebody with nice shoes on, or you might see somebody with a nice purse, or you might see a guy that he's dressed really well, and you might say, oh, he's a very nice dresser. But if you look again, that is your desire inside that is longing for something. It is your desire that draws you to that person, right? So now, when you have these desires, these normal desires in our humanity, why? Why do I say they're normal? Because the word of God says in Galatians, let's go there. Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five and verse 19 to 21. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. If you look at here, it says, Now the works, the works of the flesh are evident, which are. That means what your flesh and my flesh likes to do, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, not with wine, without wine, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. In other words, many other things are in your flesh. Your flesh is apt to to do any one of these things, right? So a lot of people say, oh, I don't, I don't know why these people looking at all these women and looking, I don't know why these men can't keep their eyes and their wife. Listen, stop lying to yourself because adultery is in you too. Fornication is in you too. It just may not have manifested itself yet. 
And a lot of people, like I see some of these, some sometimes these old mothers, they'll come to you and they say, oh, come on, baby, give me some sugar. Give mama some sugar. And then they naturally want to kiss you in the mouth. They naturally want to kiss you in the mouth. And they hug a little bit too long. Sometimes. Y'all see this look? We got to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Some of you women, you got these older dads and fathers in the church that's hugging all over y'all and they're squeezing you both arms wrapped around you, squeezing you close to them and you think their flesh don't feel your breast pressed against them? Y'all better open up your eyes. you like, oh, he's such a, a father to me. Listen. The Bible says, not Pastor Rodney, the Bible says, do not trust the arm of flesh for it will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Too many people fell into different entrapments and different situations. Why? Because you're not being wise. Yeah, Eram, sometimes they shake your hand and they may be shaking your hand too long. And y'all know it, women, you know it when a man is holding your hand and that hold is a different kind of hold. You better stop lying yourself. I don't care how old he is. I don't care how young he is. I don't care how old. She could be pastor whomever. It don't mean nothing. At the end of the day, they have flesh. And if you don't um, walk in the spirit, you will fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why I'm not shocked when I hear pastors fall or when I hear different people fall. I'm not shocked because one of the things that generally happens is this, right? And I'm going to share with you, right? Think about this. When you, when you fall, before you fall, these are the things that happen. Y'all ready? Before you fall, the first thing that's going to happen is that the enemy's got to get you to close this. He's got to get you to shut out the word. Right? So if you are a person who don't like correction, if you are a person that when somebody corrects you, you feel like they're judging you, it is because you're hiding sin. I'm telling you right now. For the Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he chastises. Whom the Lord loves, he chastises. Now, why am I teaching you these things? I'm teaching you these things because guess what? Soon, October of this year, God's willing, we're going to get together and we all going to come into one place together and people are going to travel from around the country. And I know that in this crowd of people that's coming, right? Because I'm looking to shut down this hotel. I'm looking to shut it down. I'm looking for, for us to tell you guys, listen, you can't even come to this hotel because we are booked out. You got to go to the hotel down the block and then meet us in the conference room. I'm looking to shut this place down, right? But think about this. You think the devil ain't going to come in the midst of this crowd? You think somebody ain't coming here to get a boo or a husband? They're like, hey, you know, we, we're in a hotel, so... Uh, why don't you let me come to your room and we'll pray? Oh, I have this book that I, I want you to see uh, that God is, oh my God, it's such a powerful book. I'll bring it over your room tonight after 11. Yeah, you, you, you be dumb if you want. And then you'll say to everybody that on the day that you supposed to been worshiping God, you got pregnant. So the first thing the enemy wants to do, the enemy wants to get you to close the word of God, to shut the word, to block the word out your mind, because thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The Bible says, how can a young man or a woman for that matter, how can they cleanse their way by taking heed to thy word with my whole heart? Have I sought you? Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. For thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So what happens is that once you shut out the word, 
Once you shut out the word, once you are not studying like you should, once you're not meditating in the word on a regular basis and you only wait for Sunday or when Pastor Rodney is online to study the word, if that's the only time you study the word that I'm here to tell you, you're going to be vulnerable to temptation. You're going to be vulnerable to falling. You're going to be vulnerable to the traps and snares of the enemy. And don't you walk around blaming nobody. Blame yourself. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? So that means if I'm serving Jesus Christ, then somebody can't trick me. If I'm serving Jesus Christ and I'm keeping my eyes on him, then no damsel can come to me and say, oh, I got a flat tire. When she really want me to flatten her tire. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? So I'm here to tell you that if you are... If you are walking in the power of God's word, then guess what? You can see the enemy when the enemy is coming. So that's the first thing. Number two, the enemy likes to do, he has to keep you out of prayer. Because even when you're not studying, if you're praying, God will minister to your spirit things that are not right. So you got to stop praying so much. Right. So the enemy want to get you out of praying. He want to get you. He want to stop you from praying. And number three, the third thing is the enemy want to get you to be sort of like, eh, come see, come see when it comes to church, when it comes to being around other believers. If you feel in your spirit that eh, I could go or I don't have to go, I can go or maybe not today. I maybe I'll go, maybe I won't go. That is a sign that you are drifting away. Because the Bible says when we have fellowship with God, it gives us fellowship one with another. In other words, we long for that. We are connected to the body. So we love to be around the body. My finger don't want to be broken off and set on the table. No, my finger want to be in the hand. So when you see these signs are happening, when you're not studying the word, when you're not praying, and when you're not fellowshipping with the other believers in the church sanctuary where you can sit, you can walk, and you can stand in the church and learn and grow together, if you're not having that on a regular basis, you will be defeated. And it'll seem like that you need some special touch. You need some special man of God to lay hands on you. You need a special word. You need something big and powerful to help you when the big and powerful almighty God is in you. So, in our flesh, there is nothing good. And so, Oftentimes, when we look at it, we need patience. Patience will teach us how to control this thing. Listen, I've fallen many times in my lifetime. Many times. But the one thing I'll never do, I'll never say, oh, it was that one's fault why I fell. It was this one's fault why I fell. No, no, no. The times I fell... I'm going to tell you the honest truth because God was speaking to my heart. God was talking to me and saying, don't go there. Don't do this. Don't call this one. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, don't do that today. No, it's too late. No, don't get on the phone. Turn off that TV. Don't go on the computer. Don't do this. Don't do that. And in the times where I disobeyed him, right, now I'm walking in disobedience. Now I'm vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. But the times when I obeyed him and obeyed him, I said no. When, when I said that, guess what? I walked in total victory. And there was no devil in hell that could stop me. And so I want to encourage you today. And what I try to share with you today is share with you some points and some tips to help you to realize that you need to walk in a different way with your Heavenly Father. And the only way you're going to do that is if you sit, you walk, and then you stand. Sorry for the interruption. We had an interruption. And so God bless you all that are still with me. God bless you. God bless you. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back.
And so it is imperative for you to sit, walk, and then you're going to stand. Amen. And so we're going to get ready to pray and close out tonight's study. But before we pray, um, I want to let you all know, um, amen. Can you all see me? Am I back now? Let me know if I'm back, if you can see me and everything is good. Amen. If you can see me, just say, I see you. I see you. Everything is good. God bless you. God bless you all. Let me know if you can see me. Can you see me? Yes. Amen. Okay. So before I let you go, we're going to close in prayer. We're going to close in prayer um, for tonight's study. Um, I just want to let you know that um, for the summer months, because I need to um, prepare, I got several conferences that are coming up and several things that I have to do, some of which I'm going to be talking to some of you to help me with. And so before we pray, I just want to let you know that for the summer months of um, June, July, and August, for the months of June, July, and August, starting this week, um, we're going to be meeting on Mondays and Fridays. Monday and Friday. So not Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Monday and Fridays for June, July, and August. Because there's a lot on my plate, people of God. And um, we want to um, really get things together and work on everything that we need to do. And so I'll be posting it, the change of time. So Mondays and Fridays, and we'll do it at 8 p.m. So to be a little bit earlier. So 8 p.m. on Mondays and Fridays. Um, and so that's when we'll be studying for June, July, and August. So the next time we will meet this week, will be on Friday, okay? Because if I'm not mistaken, amen, glory to God. Just give me one second. Yes, so Thursday is the first. And so we're going to meet, um, of course, we met today, the 29th of May. The next time we'll meet is the 2nd of June, which is this Friday. And then we'll meet the 5th and then the 9th. Um, and so y'all keep me in prayer. It'll give me more time to prepare and to give you guys a solid word, the best word that I can give you. Um, in addition to that, I'll be reaching out to some of you to help me with the various conferences and the things that um, I believe that God will use you mightily in. And so um, God bless you all. I love you all in the name of Jesus. Um, and so, um, thank you, Jacqueline. Yes, yeah, so we'll be meeting uh, Mondays and Fridays at 8 p.m. Um, starting this week. Um, so starting Friday and then on through August and then in September, God's willing, we'll go back to our regular schedule. Um, and so God bless you. God bless you. I'm so grateful that this was helpful to you. So let us pray. Asking God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for this day that you've given us, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the taught word, Lord God. We thank you for the people who have joined with me tonight. And Father, we thank you for those who will be watching this hereafter. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would um, grow us, Lord God, mature us, develop us, and teach us how to, what to do in the midst of holding the holding pattern, Lord God, that we would not be, um, uh, Lord God, stand stillish, Lord God, but we would sit, Lord God, we would walk, and then we would stand, Lord God, bless us in the name of Jesus to apply these principles to our lives you know, even starting tonight and, in, and into tomorrow, Lord God, whatever we face, help us to apply these same principles. You told us to study, to show ourselves approved unto you, 
workmen, that we would be workmen needing not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So bless us tonight, Lord God, and may we ever shine brighter and brighter like Jesus, your son. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so God bless you all. I love you real good in the name of our Lord. Keep me in your prayers. Thank you and continue to send your texts, your telephone calls, your messages. All these things are strengthening me. And as iron sharpens iron, so a man or woman sharpens the continents of their friend. And so I call you guys friends and you guys are friends. I love you real good in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Tricia, Edna, um, Manira, Manira, uh, Melinda, Beverly, Jacqueline, Charlene, God bless you, Miss Dorothy, God bless you, David, God bless you, my brother, amen, Dawn, God bless you. Elder Nicole, God bless you. Eram, God bless you. Yes, God bless the 41 Vision family and 41 Global family. Joanne, God bless you. Dawn, you're welcome. God bless you. Regina, God bless you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Eloise, God bless you, my sister. Alega, God bless you, my sister. Star Day, thank you for sharing the video. God bless you, Elder Nicole. God bless you. Trisha, peace and blessings. Dell, God bless you. Amen. Angela, God bless you. You're welcome. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Siobhan, God bless you. Michelle, God bless you. You're welcome. God bless you. Bless the Lord. Amen. Edna, God bless you. You're welcome. Have a blessed evening. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, really? God bless you. Manira, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming in and joining us. I pray that you were blessed tonight and that you will have another opportunity to join with us. God bless you. You can always look on my page or on YouTube for prior teachings. You know, any way that we can help you, God bless you. Have a blessed and marvelous evening, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Camille. God bless you as well. Thank you, everyone, for sharing the video. Edna and Star Day, thank you for sharing the video. Melinda, have a great evening. Edna, have a blessed evening. God bless you. Thank you, Eram. Thank you, Minister Denise. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Edna, you're welcome. John, God bless you, my brother. All right, everyone, have a blessed evening. Chrissy, thank you so much. Oh, um, uh, Manira, uh, my YouTube channel is um, it's on YouTube, and it's smiling. My last name, S-M-I-L-I-N-G, Solution, S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N. 
Okay, so smiling solution. Um, and so when you look on there, you will see um, tons of videos um, that, that I've done for years, including uh, videos that I used to do, which was my daily drive-bys. I used to do videos in the car. And so God bless you. You know, you can watch it and glean from them as well. If somebody you know is not on Facebook, they can watch because I also post repost these videos um, on YouTube as well. And so they can watch all of these. OK, so God bless you. Thank you so much once again and have a great and marvelous evening. I pray that the Lord bless and keep you. Um, and are you born again? Answer, answer me that question before you hang up. Are you born again? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Holy drive-bys, yes. So you are born again. Amen. That's good. That's good. So good. It's going to be, it's going to be a blessing to you. It's going to be a blessing to you. So if there's anything you see that you have a question about, anything that I can answer or further explain, you can always message me if you are a friend of mine. Um, amen. Bless the Lord. If you are a friend of mine on Facebook or even on YouTube, you can actually message me and um, ask any questions about the videos or things that maybe you didn't understand or if I said something that you may not agree with, you can ask me and we can talk about it. Okay? And so God bless you. Yeah, Eram. Eram is a good girl. She's a good girl. Amen. The Lord has really blessed her. And so God bless you. All right, everyone. Have a great evening. I'm going to hang up now. Have a blessed night.